Hey, manga enthusiasts, welcome to Legendary Manga Recaps. Today's adventure takes us to a deserted island filled with beauty and suspense. Buckle up as we explore survival on a deserted island with beautiful girls. A story filled with action, adventure, fantasy, romance, and survival. Let's dive into the legendary pages together. The story begins on a cruise ship, where a young man is seen proposing to Elin, the most beautiful girl in the school. The onlookers cheering them. The people are discussing things like how the young man, Gao Chenyu, is not only handsome and landed a good job, and how Elin is their goddess. Someone then says that these two are like Jack and Rose on Titanic. We see a young man who seems disinterested in all this commotion and is busy watching Master Tack's survival show on his phone. Suddenly, the weather turns stormy and the ship sways violently in the turbulent waters. All the students panic and start running towards the cabin, while the young man, Chin Tian, hangs onto the railing anxiously. While cursing the person who said anything about the Titanic, he notices a few buoys. Knowing that it's too late to go back to the cabin, he sprints towards the buoys. The ship finally starts to capsize due to the stormy weather and violent waves. Everything goes dark in Chin Tian's vision, as he, too, seems to be sucked underwater. Wilderness system activated. The system implant is complete, and you have received the new beginner's pack. Do you want to open it? The host is unconscious, and the gift bag is on hold. While these weird robotic dialogues were playing out, Chin Tian can be seen lying unconscious on the shore. Waking up in shock, Jin Tian takes a moment to calm himself and looks at the surroundings. He realizes that he is on an uninhabited island as there are no signs of human life and that the rescue team will only be deployed after the accident has been recorded. And that it may take at least five days for the rescue team to find his location. He calmly assesses the situation, realizing that he will need to spend at least six days. He notices a lot of coconut trees and starts to gather the coconuts. He is happy that he purchased a knife because he loved Master Tax show and is able to use it today to open the coconuts. While drinking the coconut milk, he seemed to remember about the system and suddenly heard the robotic voice of the system. Host revives. Would you like to open the novice package? Questions the system, and a holographic screen appears in front of him. Seeing the gift box on the screen, he clicks on it to open it. He receives the knowledge of common plants and animals from opening the gift. Just when he was lamenting about who has the time to read the books, the knowledge is directly imprinted onto his brain. Overwhelmed, he sits down while trying to make sense of what just happened. He suddenly notices that he can see the information of the coconuts that were laying around. Suddenly, he hears a scream from the forest behind him. Sprinting in the direction of the scream, he sees Elin being cornered by a snake and quickly assesses the snake's venomous nature. Aelin, panicking, cries out, Help! Help me! Just as the snake is about to strike, Xin Tian catches the snake by its tail and forcefully slams it against the trunk of a nearby tree. With the snake dealt with, he instructs Aelin to cover herself. After she's dressed, Aelin, still flustered, follows Qin Tian. She thinks that Qin Tian is a good person for saving her, but can't help but wonder if she's not beautiful, as Qin Tian didn't even spare her a glance and left immediately. Expressing her thanks, she introduces herself to him, and Chin Tian does the same. Aelin, relieved to have a companion from the shipwreck, joins him in eating coconuts and drinking their water. When Chin Tian inquires if she has any means of communication with the outside world, she sadly reveals losing everything in the ocean. While contemplating their next steps, Chin Tian notes Aelin's optimism about rescue teams coming for them. He decides not to dampen her spirits, suggesting they prepare a fire for the night to ward off insects and snakes. Elin, recalling the earlier encounter with the snake, readily agrees. Elin, eager to help, asks how to build a fire, and Chin Tian advises searching for a lighter or any washed-up items on the beach. After an hour of exploration, both notice the beach is unusually clean for a deserted island. Chin Tian, deep in thought, realizes that even on a deserted island, things from the outside world should still wash ashore. However, their search yields nothing. While Chin Tian is in deep thought, Elin discovers a plastic water bottle. Just as she prepares to throw it, Chin Tian stops her, recognizing its usefulness. Wondering how it could be useful, Elin watches as Chin Tian gathers wood and grass, 
creating a makeshift fire pit. Filling the bottle with water, Jin Tian explains that a plastic bottle with water, at a certain angle, can function as a magnifying glass, and, and he demonstrates successfully igniting a fire. With a successfully kindled fire, Chin Tian and Elin sit around, basking in its warmth. Later that night, Ellen wondered if they would starve while waiting for rescue teams to arrive. Chin Tian, understanding the importance of a positive mindset for their survival, assured her there was enough food and water for a week, aligning with the expected arrival time of the rescue teams. As Elin sought confirmation, he confidently affirmed that they would surely arrive. Chin Tian then pulled out the snake he had killed earlier that day, prompting a scared inquiry from Elin about his intentions. Playfully asking her to guess, he proceeded to butcher the snake. Concerned, she asked if it was their dinner. Seeing him confirming, Elin stubbornly refused to eat it. Chin Tian cooked the meat, expressing his delight in its taste with every bite. Annoyed by his enjoyment and remarks, Aelin eventually gave in and started to eat the snake meat, admitting it was fragrant and delicious. As they ate, Chin Tian reflected on his luck in finding the snake earlier, avoiding starvation. He thought of the mysterious system that had shut down, unsure of how to reactivate it. While lost in thought, a translucent screen suddenly appeared, announcing the host lit a bonfire, earned 100 points. Startling him, seeing this Ellen inquired if he was okay. Chin Tian dismissed it as a critter in his shirt, and relieved, Elin exclaimed she thought they were in danger. Inwardly, Chin Tian wrestled with whether he could tell Elin about the system. Not knowing her well enough to trust her, and considering the potential consequences if the information leaked, he decided it was best to keep the existence of the system a secret. He felt grateful that Elin couldn't see the system and that he didn't need to cover it up. He focused on the screen detailing his completed mission, understanding that this was like a game where he was awarded points. Exploring the system store with his newfound 100 points, he realized his ability to control the system with his thoughts. After browsing the store, he realized that everything was too expensive and he couldn't buy anything with his 100 points. There was no place where he could pick up quests. Seeing there wasn't much he could do now, he decided to lay down while thinking that they could survive with coconuts until the rescue teams arrived. Although without all the necessary nutrients. He planned to suggest the next day that they split up to catch fish and shrimp along the beach. It was then that he realized Ellen was already fast asleep and seeing her, he too decided to call it a day planning to discuss their strategy the next day. In the middle of the night, Chin Tian woke up suddenly, feeling confused about the sudden cold. Realizing it was freezing, he quickly woke up Elin. When Elin opened her eyes, she was surprised to find Chin Tian so close, and she screamed, which left him a bit confused. In an attempt to explain, Chin Tian tried to talk, but Elin interrupted him. She said he was not the person she thought he was. Chin Tian insisted that she was mistaken, but Elin continued expressing her confusion and frustration. Deciding not to explain further, Chin Tian turned away, leaving Elin feeling bewildered. Crouching by the bonfire, he suggested that Elin join him to stay warm. As Elin calmed down, she realized how cold it was and joined him by the fire, shivering as they sought warmth. Jin Tian thought about the significant temperature difference between day and night on the island, which didn't make sense scientifically. To make things worse, the cruise ship had sailed close to the equator, a warm region, and they weren't dressed for the cold. Suddenly, Jin Tian called out to Elin, expressing concern about the dangerously low temperature and the risk of freezing to death. He suggested they hug each other for warmth to survive the night. Elin, embarrassed, strongly rejected the idea. As they sat in silence, Elin, still shivering, thought about how cold her hands and feet were despite the campfire. She wondered if hugging was necessary for survival, reflecting on the intimate contact with a boy, a new experience for her. Seeing Chin Tian shivering, she realized his role in providing the bonfire.
In an unexpected turn, she stood up, leaving Chin Tian puzzled. With a red face in evident embarrassment, she asked him to close his eyes, hinting at removing her clothes. Confused, Chin Tian asked about her intentions. She explained, referring to scenes from movies and TV where heroes and heroines undress. Calming the situation, Jin Tian clarified that given their thin clothing, such measures were unnecessary. Overcoming their embarrassment, Jin Tian eventually suggested that they hug for warmth. Nestled in each other's arms, they endured the night. Soon it was dawn break. When they woke up, Elin joyfully announced the morning and marveled at the sunrise over the ocean. With newfound energy, Chin Tian confidently asserted that the tide was low, encouraging Aelin to seize the opportunity to gather stranded shrimp and crabs from the receding sea. However, their newfound bounty came with a twist, Aelin's distress over a crab that had pinched her finger. Calmly, Chin Tian advised her to use a stone to free herself. With tears in her eyes and a crab that was passed out from all the smacking, she approached Chin Tian and in that moment, amidst laughter and shared triumph, they secured a substantial supply of food for their island survival. While Chin Tian prepared the crabs they had caught earlier by prying open the shells with his knife, Elin sat beside him, watching intently. Suddenly, she asked him why he was discarding the carapaces, pointing out that there was a lot of meat in them. She remembered feeling hungry after just eating the snake yesterday, and now Chin Tian was throwing away potential food. Chin Tian responded that she could eat the meat in the carapaces if she wanted, but he warned her not to eat too much. Annoyed, Elin questioned him, asking why, especially when she had caught half of the crabs. He explained that crabs are cold, and eating too much could upset her stomach, particularly the crab roe and the carapaces. With the preparation done, they started cooking the meat. While enjoying their meal, Jin Tian mentioned that they couldn't stay on the beach and needed to head into the forest to escape the cold wind. Puzzled, Elin asked, Forest. Jin Tian explained that given the chilly air yesterday, staying on the beach would be unhealthy, possibly leading to health issues or even death from the cold. Elin further inquired why the forest? Why not build a refuge on the beach? Chin Tian explained that the forest offered many trees and materials for building a shelter, making it easier to find more food. Elin accepted his suggestion but asked if they would leave immediately after eating. Chin Tian explained that they needed to find enough water before leaving and leave a signal for help so they wouldn't miss the rescue team. As they approached some coconut trees, Chin Tian took off his belt, causing Elin to blush and cover her face, asking, What are you doing? Tying the belt around his foot, he explained that it was a method of climbing trees he saw on TV. Climbing the coconut tree proved harder than expected, but he successfully gathered enough coconuts. After opening them and filling the water bottle they had picked up earlier, he was relieved that these coconuts had a lot of water and wouldn't take long to fill the bottle. Once the bottle was filled and they left an SOS signal on the beach, they headed into the forest. Chin Tian noticed that Elin was still carrying extra coconuts, and he questioned why. Seeing her determination, she scolded him for suggesting throwing away the coconuts, emphasizing the scarcity of freshwater resources. Warning her about potential health issues from drinking too much coconut water, Chin Tian convinced her to discard the coconuts. Walking into the forest, Jin Tian reflected on how he once wanted to try living in the forest after watching a TV show. Now, amidst the trees, he missed the comforts of his room and felt the gaze of unseen animals in the dark corners. Taking a sip of water, Elin asked what he was looking for. Jin Tian responded that the snake from yesterday usually lived near freshwater, hinting at the possibility of finding freshwater nearby. Elin asked how they could find water in such a vast forest. Jin Tian pointed to a disrupted bush, explaining that he wasn't relying on luck but observing animal trails. Impressed, Elin acknowledged the similarities between humans and animals, realizing that this path might lead to a water source. Continuing their search, they engaged in playful banter, 
Elin asked if Chin Tian loved the outdoors since he knew so much about forests. Chin Tian admitted he loved outdoor activities but lacked practical experience. As they walked, Chin Tian realized the forest was larger than expected. If they didn't find water by noon, he planned to build a fire to make the most of the sunlight. Suddenly, Ellen stopped walking, prompting Chin Tian to question her. She asked if he heard something, turning in a different direction. The realization struck him, and grabbing Elin's wrist, he rushed toward the sound. Finally, they reached an opening and saw the stream of water they had been searching for. Thanks for joining us on this one-chapter adventure. If you found the twists and turns as intriguing as we did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more bite-sized manga recaps. Share your favorite moments from this chapter in the comments below. What surprised you the most? We love hearing your thoughts. Stay tuned for more quick dives into the world of manga on Legendary Manga Recaps. Until then, happy reading and stay legendary.